Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Uh, today, what we'd like to do is just a year-end review and uh, talk a little bit about some of the wonderful things that are coming our way uh, for this next year. Uh, last year, we had a, a, a wonderful opportunity to interview many new talents uh, to the gallery, introducing you to people like uh, Nicholas Otero, uh, G.L. Richardson, uh, Robin Jones, and, and, and many others. Uh, so we'll just review a little bit of those. The first episode we did uh, was on Nick Otero, um, who is a traditional uh, Santero uh, here in northern New Mexico. And um, he has had a fantastic year with us. Almost all his work is sold out. Um, he's definitely on his way up and, and growing as an artist. Uh, what I really loved about him was his humility and his willingness to work through the gallery system. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud of him for setting an example to his contemporaries for doing so. But a, a beautiful spirit. If you ever see a Nicolas Otero show, come over and meet him. He, he's a, a, a wonderful person. Um, one of the other people we, we got to introduce you to this year was G.L. Richardson. And uh, we sold his first painting last year to one of our favorite clients. And right off the bat, uh, that client said, uh, Fritz Shoulder 2.0. And there's a lot of similarity between G.L. Richardson and Fritz Shoulder. Um, there's a, a spiritual space in their paintings that you can reflect on uh, that represents a lot of their personality, uh, especially G.L. He's a very quiet-mannered uh, person who's in love with ranching, but also painting. And he's found a pretty good balance, and uh, we're, we're proud of him. He had a very successful year, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to a, a very good uh, future with him. Another uh, person we introduced you to uh, this last year was Unika Rogers. And Unika, a uh, beautiful person, she's from the Czech Republic, or Slovakia, I should say. She's from Slovakia. And uh, she was uh, raised under the Iron Curtain and moved to Canada with her parents uh, when she was young. Um, ended up uh, going to school uh, in Louisiana as an art major and uh, pretty much fell in love with clay. And she became a ceramicist. But <clears throat> something drove her into experimenting with clays. And she started painting. And if you get a chance to see her work, it's very beautiful. They're usually aspen scenes or aspen groves and very detailed, uh, but with different clays from that region, mostly around Telluride, uh, Durango area. So she's a natural fit and another uh, very beautiful person inside and out, uh, filled with uh, humility. And um, Mitch makes life really easy to work with her. We also... Um, reintroduced you to Rosita Santiago, who came back to Blue Rain Gallery, actually in February will be her, her year mark. And uh, she picked up right where she left off. And um, I, I have developed a, a great um, passion for her work, uh, especially her, her passion for life. Um, Rosita's here, there, and everywhere, and still has time to paint. And uh, her paintings are wonderful. They're um, they're kind of reminiscent of the romantic styles of Taos in, in Santa Fe, maybe the turn of the last century. And uh, she's done a very uh, respectful way of, of, of producing that era's uh, type of work. And uh, so if you get a chance to meet her, you, you look, you'd like that. She's a fireball. Um, I also had the opportunity to go on a radio show, which we published as a podcast in episode 56. And this uh, group was out of uh, Tucson and I, I believe uh, Southern Cal California. And uh, the audio wasn't the best, but we had a good time. So if you want to have a little laugh with Leroy Garcia, uh, check that uh, episode out. We also introduced you to a brand new jeweler that we're excited about. I had met this artist in Chicago maybe 10 years ago. Her name is Belle Brooks, and um, she does really cool jewelry that's fairly affordable. It's a mixture of gold, silvers, and diamonds, and other stones. Um, very innovative and another very sweet person. Um, <clears throat> we also did something experimental uh, last year in our podcasts. 
uh, twofold. One, we started doing ride-alongs. And our, our first ride-along, we went to Phoenix, and we were able to uh, visit with Thomas Breeze Marcus, in, um, who's one of our artists. But in, in Phoenix, he's really renowned for his murals. And uh, and to his out to outreach in the community, uh, getting um, the young whippersnappers to get involved in in art in a respectful way, and in and it's a way to honor their their traditions and their cultures, and um, it was really cool uh, riding through the reservation all the way into downtown Phoenix, and seeing the influence that this young man has had, and we're we're proud of him. He's really growing. Uh, he's always busy doing some some projects. Um, if you get a chance, that's episode 60. Another young artist that we introduced you to that I'm especially excited about is Raven Sky River. And Raven uh, Sky River is Clinkett, just like Preston Singletary. In fact, they have uh, collaborated on a few pieces that we have sold through Blue Rain Gallery. But Raven's one of the more talented uh, sculptural artists that we have in glass. I guess we would start with Shelley Allen, but also Raven. Um, um, in fact, uh, one of the more popular things that Raven uh, did this year at Indian Market uh, was made uh, horny toads. And they are really cool. If you get a chance to see them, I, we just loaded one on our website. You might want to check out. Uh, but it's full of texture and just pure talent. Um, the talent, though, if you talk to them, like all these artists, comes by years of sticking uh, with the process. Uh, he started uh, by learning in, in little hot shops and then uh, becoming friends with established artists and eventually ended up working as assistant on the William Morris team. So uh, you're, you're looking at a, another rising star in the Native American genre in glass. Um, the other ride along we did uh, this year was with Jim Vogel, which was really fun. We we visited the, the his studio, but we also visited the, the village of Dixon and all the way to Las Trampas, uh, where we ended up at a at a church where we couldn't get in. It was closed. But some of my great, 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 great grandfather's works are in there. And that's Bernardo Mira y Pacheco. And those are currently being restored uh, by Nicolas and um, uh, Gustavo Guler. Um, another uh, wonderful, amazing artist that uh, has been growing and can't say enough about her is Robin Jones. Um, Robin Jones is painting great works and they're, they're pretty affordable, uh, usually the 2000 to $8,000 range for most of her works. Now, if you get a chance, uh, give her a, give her a second look because she deserves it. She's very talented, self-taught. Uh, she mostly paints on aluminum uh, and then gold foils on top of that or silver foils. And she's very environmentally conscious, and um, which is, is what our world needs to look at sometimes as well. We ended the, the season uh, by, by talking to somebody... Uh, that's maybe not in the artist fold, but she is a national treasure as far as I'm concerned, and that's Marigold Linton. Um, one of the she was the first person out of California to get a PhD uh, coming from the reservation, and uh, we had a wonderful time talking to her. Uh, she is an avid collector. In fact, if you go into your home, you're like, where do you put anything else? Because it is full of art, and this lady has a passion to collect no different than an artist has a passion to create. So the last, uh, the last podcast of this season that we'll be releasing next week will be an interview I did with uh, Preston Singletary, Dan Friday, in Raven Sky River, which will give you an in-depth perspective on how they view uh, contemporary native glass and, and the movement from the Northwest uh, corridor all the way down to the Southwest. And it'll give you a great historical perspective of how um, Blue Rain has really worked with Preston Singletary. And Preston Singletary has been a great ambassador of, of glass. And we were talking about the, the exhibit that the Museum of Indian Art and Culture has produced that's touring the country right now. Uh, but most of those artists were collaborative with Preston. And so his influence has just gone through the generations. Um, I was mentioning in that podcast uh, when I first started K 
carrying Preston, there was three glass artists in the native genre in the entire market in this area. And that was Tony Hohola, who passed away. Um, uh, what's the other guy's name? Oh, <laughs> Marvin Oliver who's also passed away, and Preston Singletary. In this latest exhibit at the Museum of Indian Art and Culture that's ro uh, rotating through the country right now, there's over 40 uh, glass artists now, and there's more to come. There's a lot of uh, taking up this process and learning it. And and that's pretty cool to be involved in, in a movement. Um, the glass movement, you can say, started at Blue Rain with Preston Singletary. So for a 30th year anniversary, it was a wild year. We had a lot of shows, a lot of fun. The Indian market itself uh, was well attended, uh, a lot of sales. Um, the glass especially flourished. We were able to bring in artists uh, like um, Raven and Dan. Also, Russell Sanchez uh, from Sunny Delfonso joined our stable as well. And so we, we featured him a few times. And you'll be seeing more ads on all of these guys as we go forward. The other thing that happened that was pretty cool was about this time last year, we opened up Blue Rain Gallery in Durango. And that has been so far a successful venture. It's such a beautiful country up there. Um, it's near Mesa Verde. So if you want to do a nice trip to a mountain town and, and get some historical perspective, uh, plan on going to Mesa Verde, but stop by Blue Rain Gallery as well. And we, we have a whole lineup of shows this year. If you go to our events page uh, on our website, you'll see the listing for the entire year of shows, Durango and Santa Fe. And uh, we'll, we'll just kind of um, highlight uh, a few of these things. Um, in January and February, uh, we will be featuring uh, Matthew Sievers in January and Rosita Santiago in February. Uh, we'll be featuring them in the Durango Gallery. Um, as far as Santa Fe, boy, we have a lot going on. Um, this, uh, this Friday, we'll be releasing or opening a show for um, Ryan Singer, who is Navajo. And uh, his stuff is fun. You can look at his episode as well on our podcast. Uh, but he does uh, a lot of sci-fi, but on the res. And uh, it's really fun. It's, it's great work. Um, he has a great um, vision uh, of <laughs> creativity. He, he's a master at that. Um, and then when we go to April or to um, February 14th, Valentine's Day, we're going to release for the first time ever. We've never done this, but uh, Aaron Courier is a master draftsman. Dra uh, she draws like no other. And um, she, um, we're going to release a whole series of nude drawings that she's done over the years. There's probably about 50 of them. And we want to keep the prices down. So give everybody an opportunity to collect a, an Aaron Courier uh, painting. Uh, so it's a wonderful opportunity. And then on February 16th, which is right past Valentine's Day, we are going to open up for Tony de la Luz. And Tony de Luz is a brand new artist to our stable. Um, he's out of uh, Arizona. But he, he paints a lot of like Route 66, uh, old cars. Uh, they're well done. You know, he, he was a graphic person, a graphic designer for many years. And boy, he's really polished. He's never really been in a gallery. This is his first gallery and probably his first major showing. And so we'd like to encourage people to come to that. That's also going to be a well-valued show as Tony's uh, just getting his foot in the door. So you might want to pay attention to that. In... Uh, <clears throat> In March, uh, in Durango, we will be featuring Sean Dedeker for the Art Walk, which is the first Friday of that month. On March 15th in Santa Fe, uh, I will be curating a show based on contemporary Native art for the gallery. And so we'll be having pottery and paintings and sculptures, uh, sculptures by Tammy Garcia, sculptures by uh, Alan Hauser, um, sculptures by Preston Singletary and glass uh, is, is just kind of another I'm going to go into the to the back room and find some treasures and, and pull them out and see what we can do I think that'll be a fun show too and then on uh, Friday the 29th we are doing a solo show for Chris Papan and Chris deserves this show his his work has been 
uh, being bought up by all the museums across the country. Uh, he's really making an impact on contemporary Native art, especially when it comes to contemporary ledger art. He's uh, found a new way, a new voice, uh, and still, you know, respecting his past. And so I'd like to encourage you all to, to do that one. And then in, in April on the first uh, Friday, we will be featuring uh, Dennis Siminski in Durango. So you get a chance to come down to Durango. Uh, that would be wonderful. Um, in Santa Fe, uh, the end of Santa Fe, uh, the last Friday, we'll be featuring um, Matthew Sievers and Bryce Pettit. So as you can see, the, the schedule is full. I've only gotten through uh, uh, March and into April. But for if you're interested in more of our events, go to our events page and um, check it out. Also, uh, if you get a chance, subscribe to uh, Blue Rain Gallery. Um, you can sign up for our podcast by going to any of the platforms. You can also find our podcast at BlueRainGallery.com under the menu podcast. Um, I'd like to encourage everybody to visit our online shop, BlueRainPrintShop.com, and bring art into your everyday life. Thanks. Thanks.